It looks like it's over, man. So guys, it's finally official. Netflix Witcher and the interconnected universe of shows they've been trying to get off the ground the past few- I watched few the animated Witcher movie. I thought it was garbage. ...years. Well, it's all dead, to say the least. There have been no less than four major bad, Netflix yeah. Witcher stories that have broke over the past several days, all of which we're going to cover today, with each one being slightly funnier than the last. But the only part you've maybe heard anyone talk about, the other stories kind of went mm -hmm. under the radar, but this is the one that kicked everything off. Last week, Netflix made the announcement that the final two seasons of the main show would no longer be happening. That the seven season plan the writers never stopped oh. talking about is now getting thrown out. And what they've written is being cut down and filmed all at once, apparently, to be released as seasons four and five. Believe I wonder it or not, why. though, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's arguably the smallest bit of news. But just for a little perspective as to how much of a mess that by itself already is, without the other news even factored in, the Netflix show is currently two full seasons into the main story from the books. Season 1 covers some of the standalone short stories, plus a mm -hmm. bunch of Siri and Yennefer fanfiction, but seasons 2 and 3 were supposed to have been adapting the main saga, the core books that all tell one amazing, unbroken story. In those two seasons... So they're just gonna, like, not do that? ...though, again, yeah. 2 and 3, they've only managed to get through one book. Just one, Ooh. because they skipped one of the novels almost entirely. Season 2 was fully invented for the show, at least after the first episode. I'm sure this won't surprise you, but Eskel being a weird perv who turns into fucking Groot and gets cut down by Geralt, that's a Netflix thing. As was Vesemir having severe brain damage and wanting to inject Ciri with Witcher mutations, and Yennefer losing her powers and deciding to sacrifice- I'm really glad that I didn't watch the second season, because I watched- that sounds so stupid. Like, I only watched the first season, I watched it twice. I watched it once, I think I watched it with like Izzy or something, and then after that I watched it with my mom. And I liked it. I thought the show was great. The first season. I, I genuinely enjoyed the show. And then I heard the season two was bad. It's the same thing I did with like Sword Art Online. Where like everybody told me that after season one it was bad. So I just stopped watching it. Problem solved. Theory to a demon. And the monolith yeah. plotline. And well anyway the point is after a full season of whatever it was they were doing there season three did finally manage to get through one book sort of i mean it did it poorly but the bar is so low for this show i'll give it credit anyway mm -hmm. that said even if we give the writers the pass of having skipped over one novel entirely plus huge sections of two of the others which they did and even if we completely ignore the eighth book because it's not vital to telling this story and it's way too late to include most of it anyway. By the way, it's not a big deal if they diverge from the books. It's only a big deal if the divergence is bad. Even if we give the show a pass for all of those things, they still have to somehow cover the three mm -hmm. longest and by far the most complicated books in just two seasons now. And because the writers clearly thought their ideas were so much better than what was already written, they're also going to have to wrap up approximately 42 storylines that the show invented. Like, they made Fringilla a main character for no reason. The same is true of Francesca, who, my god, they butchered that character even though the actress is great, but that's not even to mention the 35 other characters that have no business still being in the story, yet are for reasons... Yeah, like, that's the thing for me, is, like, whenever I heard of The Witcher, it's like, I'm like, okay, well, whenever... I, I want to watch Geralt fight, like, a griffin, or, like, a, a ghost, or something like that. And then, like, maybe Geralt and Vesemir have to, like, team up to kill, like, uh, you know, like, a drake or something. Like, that'd be pretty cool. And, like, so they have to, like, find out where it lives. Maybe get, like, a few people from the town. And, like, work together. Like, because that, that's what I was... That's all I wanted, really. That's it. That's all... That, that, like, what... Why? Why? Why couldn't we just... Why can't you just do that? beyond my comprehension. And I'm just telling you guys, not that you didn't know this already, mm -hmm. but we are witnessing history in the making here. We're all old and gray in 2075. No, he, he's right about this, that this show fuck up will be historic. This is a historic level fuck up. On our fourth replay of The Witcher 7, Geralt Returns Again, Part 3, <laughs> Netflix Witcher will still be the premier example to bring up when yeah. it comes to how not to run a show. Because for all of the other book and game adaptations that mm -hmm. have definitely been less than stellar lately... Man, that's pretty bad, ain't it? Like... Are they making... Did they make or are they making a season two for Rings of Power? Yes? For who? Lately, this is the one that had everything going for it from the start. A lead actor who loved the role, a huge yeah. budget, all the goodwill you could ever ask for leading up to season one, 
And of everything, which there's a lot more to say, what's most embarrassing is that the writers had a series of books that were damn near written for television. This isn't Dune or even Lord of the Rings where yeah. you'd need someone insanely creative and talented to bring it to the screen. No, the first several Witcher books, especially 1, 2, and 4, are structured just like a TV show. And what I find extremely funny is that where Henry Cavill chose to bow out at the end of season 3, that is the single most inconvenient time in any story I can think of to have to change lead actors. Because the season ends where Geralt, Yennefer, and Ciri get split up. And for the rest of the story, the entire thing, that's the conflict. That's the reason you care. You want to see them survive and reunite because their relationships with each other are so special in the books. <laughs> Yet in the show, what we, but it's a different guy. we currently have is a Yennefer who just one season ago was going to have Ciri killed. Again, a decision the showrunners made of their own accord instead of the way their relationship... What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What is the, what's happening? How do you do that? Should have blossomed throughout that entire season. And what we also have is a brand new Geralt who we've never seen on screen with either of the other characters. That's Yet so they're going to want people to care about them reuniting. Listen, I don't consider myself a cynical person. Almost all of the content on this channel is positive, but... I make an exception for this show because it's mm -hmm. taken something I love and am truly passionate about and has turned it into a complete joke. And speaking no, see, he he's not like he's not where I'm at with Lord of the Rings. What you have to understand is that every video game and Rings of Power, this is the same as like uh stuff on Deviant Art. It's just fan fiction. This isn't the real show, it's not the real series, it's just some bullshit that they made up. You know, like, that's it. It's all fan... Yeah, it's all fan fiction. Like, I don't take this personally. Like, I don't get offended that Rings of Power is bad or The Witcher went off course because it it's not real anymore. Oh, it's bad? Okay, yeah, I'm just not gonna... I, it's not real. Yep, problem solved. Of complete jokes, let's move right on to the next story from a few days ago because we're just getting started here. You might have heard that around a year ago, although you probably didn't hear because no one on the planet was excited for this, but it was announced that Netflix had greenlit another Witcher spinoff, which, Wait, I mean, Netflix has I thought they made another one that was really bad. I never, I, the only time I ever heard about it was the day it came out and somebody said it was bad and nobody watched it, and then I never heard about it ever again. The blood, yeah, it was like something blood, yeah. Lit another Witcher spinoff sounds more like a threat than a headline. Blood Origin was their lowest rated show of all time, but for some reason... That's what I heard about. Yeah, about how it was the lowest rated show of all time. Yeah, that's pretty bad. ...reason someone thought it would be a good idea to give the go-ahead to an even worse idea than Blood Origin. A full show about the rats, who do appear in Season 3 very briefly. And if you don't know about the rats, no spoilers, but they are by far the most insufferable characters in all of the books. They're a group of irritating criminals who take Ciri in and do horrible things to her, and throughout the three books they appear in, they have exactly one good moment, and it's not something they do, it's something that's done to them. They exist in the books to serve a narrative purpose, which, hey, they definitely accomplish, but giving them a full spin-off seems like it must have been a dare. Like someone in the Netflix Witcher writing room said, Alright, let's come up with the worst idea possible and see if we can get it greenlit. And for once they nailed the assignment, because ideas don't get worse than a full show about the rats. That's not even to mention that, and I don't mean this in any personal way, but who they handed this rat's show to, the showrunner for this spinoff, was someone that had never written for a show before The Witcher. Well, that's pretty good, right? I mean, it's like, at that point, I think that's kind of a good thing, because, like, that way it'll just die really fast, and it'll be over. Right? It's like, okay, well, we've got to have this, we got to do this, yeah, let's just... Let's just, ha you want to do it? Yeah, sure. Where did you work before? McDonald's? Okay, you're perfect. So you're going to run this show now and go ahead and think about what we're going to do and uh, whatever you want, we're going to do it. <laughs> Problem solved. Never. No other credits. And I mean, that's definitely a surefire recipe for success right there. Anyway, last yeah. April, filming kicked off for this show in South Africa. It was scheduled to be a six-month shoot, yet kind of ominously, filming unceremoniously ended after under two months, wow. leading to a lot of questions as to what exactly happened. Well, it's since come out that filming ended four entire months before it was supposed to because Netflix saw what they had already filmed and decided to pull the plug. Report hey, 
some babies deserve to be aborted. I think that's a good thing. That's a that's a Netflix W. Yep, they knew it. They saw it was bad. <laughs> and they decided, you know what? Let's cut our losses and let's move on. <laughs> get the coat hanger. Let's <laughs> Let's get rid of this. They push it down. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Reportedly, they had only filmed one or maybe two of the eight episodes, and now, behind the scenes, months and months and months later, right. they're figuring out, or maybe have figured out at this point, what to do with what they already filmed. Yep. According to Redanian Intelligence, who cover Netflix Witcher news and leaks, they have a flawless track record, and I'm hoping they find success with another series because uh -huh. they do a great job, but according to them, the footage may either end up being used in Season 4 as flashbacks, or Netflix may try to turn what they filmed into some sort of standalone sequel, like that upcoming Witcher anime that's apparently dropping later this year. And don't worry, there's news about that one, too. Before we move on, though, I do need to take a quick second to thank today's- I don't- I, I think we have to keep in mind that, like, a Witcher anime? Why do you think that's going to be good? Because it's animated? The reason why anime is good is because it's not made with the same, like, Western, like, culture, social commentary slop that we have. That's why people like anime. So if you do something like that, and it's just another, basically, show that people here are making, then it's going to be the same thing. Sponsor, Factor, who at this point are just a channel staple, as they're the only meal delivery service you'll ever need, and they're what I use almost every single week. Jesus. I've been personally ordering Factor of my own accord for the past six months at this point, no exaggeration, because doing so has solved every food problem I've ever- I used to have those. Yeah. ...ever had. Factor meals are fresh and never frozen, but by far what's most important to me is that every meal I've had has somehow been healthy, convenient, and really, really good, which I had thought was an impossible. Well, for like a split second, I thought this said something else. I was like, what the fuck? Bro. Possible combination Me too. Factor. Yeah, I was like, I just don't wait, have time what? to cook every day or most days, really. And most convenient foods are either unhealthy, extremely expensive, or just mm -hmm. mind numbingly boring. But Factor is none of those things. And it's truly changed my health for the better this past half year, as I'm eating what I should be mm -hmm. every single day without burning hours I don't have cooking and cleaning. Factor delivers the meals to your front door each week, and when hungry, just pop them in the microwave for two minutes, or what I do is throw them in the oven for I eight, never and you're that. good to go. To get started, no, I, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code NEON50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. I have an oven that works, but I don't know how to use it. Back in the day, we only had this like little small convection oven, and that's why I would cook everything out of, and so I've only learned how to cook out of the out of the ghetto oven. And I don't know how to use a normal oven. That's why on the pizza video that I did, I just put the little oven on top of the big oven, and I just cooked the pizza on the little oven. <laughs> Us, and this is new, 20% off your the spider next box pizza? as well. Yeah. That said, just know you won't be locked in or committed for anything more past that first one, so I'm just personally recommending give that heavily discounted first box a try and you won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Now dig in. Okay, so I mentioned that upcoming Witcher anime, Sirens of the Deep, because there's also news related to both Sirens and the children's Witcher show Netflix announced. Yes, a Witcher show for the little ones, because we all- oh, God, Bro, they're gonna turn this shit into Star Wars. Oh my God. Oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? What, what is this? Oh no, The Witcher is huge with and practically made for the under 10 crowd. I mean, my younger cousin's abs- To be fair, I bet kids probably love this shit. But like, the reason why they love it is because it ain't made for them. It's actually good. Absolutely love playing with their Horse and Junior action figures and their yeah. Philippa Eilhart dolls. I believe they have the variant with her eyes gouged out, but anyway, just for a little quick background on Sirens of the Deep, it's a full-length movie coming out later this year made by the same studio who did Nightmare of the Wolf, that Vesemir prequel from I think three years back that's literal garbage. Some really, really loved. I just thought it was okay for what it was. I never reviewed it because this channel didn't exist when it came. It just, it sucked. It sucked. 
came out. But anyway, Sirens yeah. of the Deep isn't a sequel to Nightmare. Instead, it's adapting one of the short stories that season one skipped over, A Little Sacrifice, which, no spoilers, right. but A Little no, Sacrifice is a really laid back and pretty sad story it's about mediocre. a girl, Essie Davin, or Poppet, who falls in love with Geralt, which he struggles with because of his feelings for Yennefer. And there's Ooh. also a mermaid-related B-plot that's really Marlocks. just a background thing with thematic ties to the main story, but... You can see from the trailer that Netflix have taken the references to an underwater war and have expanded it into something a lot mm -hmm. bigger, which, I mean, whatever, at this point, I'm positive this movie is just going to gut the subtlety of the original, but I'm not going to judge the whole thing before it's out, mostly because production-wise, there's a lot of different people involved compared to the main show, plus Nightmare of the Wolf was 6 out of 10 okay. I mean, compared to Season 2 or Blood Origin, it was basically Return of the King. Okay, actually, I would That's actually probably a good point, because, like, you know, he's watching it in the context of, like, the, the the season two of the show that was, like, really bad. Like, I had never watched that. So, like, for me, I had just, like, seen the game, and then I watched season one. It was pretty good. And, like, so I had no idea. You believe this shit was, like, 20 years ago? This shit was 20 years ago. Go near that far, but speaking of Return of the King, the Doug Cockle is voicing Geralt in this movie, which any chance to hear him again as Geralt is a blessing, plus Joey Beatty is there as Dandelion, he's great, and Anya is back as Yennefer, she's a perfectly good actress, even if Yennefer is the worst written character in the show. In my opinion, a lot of people take how poorly Yen is written in the show and then pin it on the actress, but whatever, that's beside the point, because just a few days ago, it was reported that Sirens of the Deep marks the end of Netflix Witcher, even if Thank it's not going to be the last thing to release. Again, according to Redanian Thank Intelligence, God. the main show is not only getting cut short, but Sirens of the Deep is the final Netflix Witcher spinoff. Everything else Bro, that was finishing it off with a with a with a cartoon? That's bad. Planned or announced, yeah. including that children's show that they started developing in 2021, well. three whole years ago, oh my God. is dead in the water. And after Sirens of the Deep and those last two main show seasons that they're filming back to back, Netflix is apparently done with The Witcher. So for all five of you that were excited for Philippa and Ferb, or Series Fairly Odd Parents, or Zoltan 101, or whatever that kids show was going to be, well, I'm sorry to disappoint, but it isn't happening. And that, honestly, has me excited. Not because I don't like what Netflix has done with The Witcher. I mean, I don't, but that's not why. I'm excited because now the clock can start ticking for someone else to give it a try. And yeah. whoever that ends up being will have the step-by-step -step instructions on what not to do. Granted, well, it's like, I don't know how so many of these people are not able to just create a show that's for the fans of the show or the game or the ip in general like why do you like wh how does this happen ego i think it's ego too i think it's that these people think that they can do it better than the guy that got paid millions of dollars just to use his books it's like do you ever think about that it's like you're hired by Netflix just to go ahead and make his book a movie. And this is the guy that probably got paid way more money than you did. And you think that you can do a better job than him? <laughs> then why aren't they giving you any money? Why didn't they pay you for your books? <laughs> why don't you shut the fuck up and just do it the way, do it the way it is in the book? They always do, yeah. There is no guarantee the next attempt will be any good either, and it'll probably be the better part of a decade before any studio even wants to try and adapt the books again, but as long as CDPR's next games are good and The Witcher stays super relevant, I think it's only a matter of time before someone else gives it a try. I think it's a guarantee that the new Witcher game will be good, because Cyberpunk 2077 was good. And it started off in such a terrible place that... I don't think anybody, whenever the game came out, expected it to improve as much as it has. I feel like that's tremendous. Also, just a personal thing, I'm really looking forward in a couple of years to doing a huge post-mortem on this whole Netflix Witcher debacle and how slash why it all went down the way it did. Not that they'd be excited to chat with me after my reviews of their show, yeah, but I don't think they're I'd love to ask the showrunner not in an aggressive gotcha sort of way, because I'm not that type of channel, Why'd you but decide just to ruin as a Witcher everything? fan, I'd love to hear the answers firsthand as to why certain decisions were made. I mean, I feel like in our hearts we all know the answer, but I'd love to hear some sort of explanation out loud, because there hasn't been a single Netflix Witcher interview that wasn't a total puff piece, at least from what I've seen. Anyway, that's all for me today. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like, as that really helps my content get out there, and feel free to subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. Yep. As of recording, we just hit 150k yesterday, which is pretty cool. Thanks to my channel's patrons, as always, for your support. Follow me on Twitter if you want to, and that's all. See ya.
But now, uh, maybe I gave them some ideas, but they never listened to me. <laughs> they never listened to me. So, guys, it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, to be fair, didn't uh, Sapos Sapkowski, I don't know how to pronounce his name, uh, didn't he also say the, that he didn't like some of the things they did in the games, too? Or, like, he didn't even play the games? He did, yeah. He did. So, and, and it, that's not a problem, though. And do you want to know why that's not a problem? He hated the games? Yeah. Do you want to know why it doesn't matter? Because they're good. That's the thing. And so, yeah, they diverge from the books. Yeah, but they're good. And it's like, yeah, he might not like them, but other people like them, and it's fine. And so, the problem is, again, not that you diverge from the source material. It's that you diverge from the source material, and you shouldn't because you suck. The reason he hates the games is because he decided he didn't want a percent of the sales. <laughs> I would also hate them. <laughs> if, if that's true, I would... Yeah, I... Yeah, I can see that. I think that makes a lot of sense. You want to know why George Lucas is the richest director in history? By like 3 or 4x anybody else? Because he got a percentage of merchandise sales. That's the reason why. A lot of... Like, who here had a lightsaber as a kid? <laughs> yeah, who here had one of those? Yeah, they offered him a percentage, he refused. It's his fault. It is. Yeah, it's a big fuck up. Me? Yeah, me too. Or just individual Disney older? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the guy's massive. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, I think that The Witcher is like a really great example of what happens whenever you decide to ignore the fans, ignore the source material, and just push whatever you want for, you know, whatever reason you have. I think it's a really great thing that the show failed because it shows that that type of thinking and that type of decision making is not successful and you shouldn't do it so yeah i think it's a great thing that the show failed and uh yeah it's it's a great data point uh, i've never seen neon knights videos before i'll give you guys a link make sure to give them a sub give it a like as well the death note movie is from well i'm not gonna watch a death note movie yeah i have no idea with season four it really is a failure you think it's really a failure i didn't even know lady bane thank you for the raid i appreciate it yeah i mean i guess so I mean, I don't know anybody. Like, I, I heard a lot about season two being bad. I didn't even hear about season three. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't even know. I had no idea. I'm sure Keanu Reeves is probably not a gamer, but he didn't complain about his role. He embraced it regardless of how people felt about his character in the game. Well, it's that he's an actor. Like, he doesn't need to understand the game to be an actor. And also, like, for example, Johnny Depp said he doesn't even watch his own movies. He's like, yeah, people tell me the Pirates of the Caribbean movies are great. I don't watch them. I'm not sure. But yeah, apparently people really like them. So again, it's not necessarily the process that's the problem. It's the outcome of the process. And whenever the outcome is bad, everybody turns around and is like, okay, what the fuck are you doing?